Hey folks, it's Fridgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19 here in Boulder Canyon. We're just going to get the front weight on this tractor so that we've got a little bit more grip with these wheels as we go racing around the field. And we're going to get the trailer hooked on and we're going to go and see about emptying out that combine that we've got right up the top. Now, we don't need to go up the steep hill over there because we have reached the road going around the outside. So we should be able to go bombing down our road that we built all the way down through here. And we can meet up with the combine up around the top and then get the very first load of corn off of our combine on our very first harvest on the big field up here. I'm actually quite excited to see just how much we're going to get. I mean, we've already got a full load from the combine, and it's not done once around the field yet. So we're on 9,200 litres of grain, and um, we've still got the rest of the outside round. So this particular harvest could take a little while. Right, all things considered, and for that reason, I don't regret my earlier decision of taking a larger corn header than would actually have been suitable for this particular combine. I have no regrets about that decision whatsoever. Now, I'm going to bring this one in here like this. He's going to start up and he's going to go and move, but I'm hoping that we will be able to... Get round onto this corner. He's probably not going to go round the corner properly before he stops. He's definitely not going to unload anything before he stops. But there, he's now stopped, so then he's going to go on again, which means that we can now follow him. We're only just able to unload on the go. Like any any wider than that, and we would struggle to do anything with it at all. I, I, I don't think that we'll be able to have anything wider than this. Well, th th there's no question about that whatsoever. We definitely wouldn't be able to take anything wider than this. And this one's going to be a struggle enough at times, I think, while we're working our fields here. I think we are going to have a few difficulties getting this grain unloaded. You know what I think I'm going to do is I'm actually going to set the... There. If I set that to 2 at the moment, and then speed up a bit, I set on 9 kilometers an hour right there. The combine is actually doing 10k, so I will speed that up ever so slightly. And now I can just cruise along at exactly the same speed as the combine, which is a better move. That That is a, a better thing to be able to do, especially going down this hill. It's a little bit of a struggle to sort of stay even with it. I want to get as much of the grain off the combine as I can before we get over to this fence. I have, I still haven't actually emptied it out completely. So what I'll do is if I stop here, I back up the hill slightly like this so that we stay out of the way of the combine. He will turn around that corner and then I want to just take off the rest of the grain that I can as we go along here. Don't stop. I don't want you to stop. There. I'll take off what I can as we go along this bottom end. We're not going to take a huge amount. And then that should be sufficient then to... Yeah, that's the, that'll be fine. He'll easily be able to get all the way along the bottom end. So we're going to run over here. We're going to have to get back up to the top of the fields. And uh, before we can like take off the rest. So I'm going to move the tractor down over here. We'll come up to there, and then we're going to skip back to the combine. Ooh, ooh, there we go. Uh, there. We're going we're gonna to skip back over to you over here, and we're going to follow this one in through. And just run this one along the bottom edge of the field along here, and see how it does going against the fence. We won't have any problems here. It's on that corner over there is where the combine is going to try and tuck in a little bit too tight. I did wonder if it would do that with the stone up there. We always have that issue with the stone down there because our field is a bit too tight on it. But that one up there, we didn't seem to have that problem. That actually went through there just fine without any issues. So I'm kind of hoping that we can do the same on here. But I'm not entirely hopeful because it's a, a slightly sharper corner. 
Oh no. No, no, we are going to do it. It is, it is going to actually get round that corner there. And it may also sort of straighten up. Yeah, he's going to straighten up to go in there. So he might be able to get round that corner without causing any major hassles either. And now he's going to come out to this bit. And this is where he's going to have to do his turn. So he's, he's going to come out to here. And now he's going to turn round. Uh, while you do that a minute, I'm going to jump back to the tractor and we're going to start trying to follow it up the hill this is going to be more of a challenge but i want to be unloading the combine here i mean in real life we would have unloaded the combine at the bottom of the steep hill we wouldn't have even started heading up this hill and this tractor can't even pull this trailer up the hill not at 10 anyway um in real life we would have emptied the combine at the bottom of the hill uh, before going up the really steep part, that would just have been a, a, a safe precaution to take. You don't want to be overloading your combine. You don't want to have too much weight in there. Because the grain tank is on the top of the combine. And that makes for a very unsteady machine once you start getting some weight of grain into it. It doesn't take a huge amount for that weight to become fairly unsteady on the top of the machine. So I'm actually going to let the combine go over to that corner. Because we're not in a desperate hurry to go and unload it. So we'll let it get over to that corner, and then once he's turned and he's started heading up the next bit of the hill, then we'll pull up alongside him and we'll start unloading him again. So we can back out to here. We could have just gone all the way around the road, I suppose, rather than trying to struggle up that hill there like we just did. But we managed it. We managed it just fine without any hassle, so we can congratulate ourselves on a job well done and then move on so we want to scramble up through here 13k i'm managing to pull getting up here which is just enough to persuade him to put the spout out get to this point and there right oops okay i pressed the wrong button there when i came up i want to go to there and there we go now he's actually working we're unloading this grain and thinking i might head it no i'm not going to i was i was thinking i might head into the stone and go and start doing some unloading uh, like just cut a a track around that one a couple of times but i'm not going to do that yet we're going to wait we'll wait until uh we've actually sort of worked in a little bit closer for now i'm going to do probably four times around the outside edge we we'll definitely do three thinking we may do four times around the outside edge and then once we've done those four times all the way round, then we can um, see about starting to do some land work. I mean, it may maybe three will be enough, considering how wide this cut is. But we, we have got a fair old bit of cutting going on with this one, haven't we? And there it is. Our combine hard at work with our tractor as well. We'll come up, we'll, come up, we'll, bring, we'll bring it on up this hill over here. That's, that's actually a pretty cool picture there, I think. Just bring it in like that. Yep, there we go. Right, I think that was a pretty cool picture. I, I don't know if I'll actually be able to get that one uh, just right or whether we get a, a slightly better one. I mean, it's always... I, I think it always looks pretty cool being able to sort of run along like this, but it's, it's difficult to sort of get it and be able to watch it at the same time can be a bit tricky trying to do that so i got 25,000 liters of grain i'm doing all right with the grain at the moment and we're doing all right with following the combine round i'm going to just drive on over here a little bit and i'll let the combine come out round that corner there it's not worrying about the little tiny bits of grain that are left behind He's just going to leave those. There's a couple stalks there. Oh. He is actually worrying about them on this one. That's going to possibly cause some issues for it later. So if I drive over that one and get rid of it, then we no longer need to worry about it. And coming down this hill, I will put the speed limiter on at 10k, and we will see if it does actually speed limit coming down the hill. He's struggling to keep it going at 10k going up this bit. So I'm also thinking it's probably going to run away with a little bit going down the hill. Because that's a steep old hill that is. And we've now got a lot of weight pushing behind us here. 
We've got a lot of weight. We're on 27,000 litres of grain. And uh, no, actually, surprisingly, the tractor is holding itself. As soon as I take off the cruise control, though, and just allow the tractor to sort of free wheel, it, de it did start to go quite a bit faster. Definitely wasn't slowing down in any way on there. I'm just going to get to the bottom corner, and I'm not going to take any more. I'm going to run straight from here all the way back home, and we will deal with it from that point. So 28,600 there, 700, 800, 900... 29,000 litres of grain on board right there. So let's head back up the road and we'll go and tip this out. I'm going to tip this into the pigs. I'm going to put this straight in for the pigs. So we can start loading up all of the pig pen. Getting everything unloaded into there. We, we can um, like fill that one up completely. And then the remaining grain we will start putting into the tower here. Now, considering that this is not even twice round the field and we've got our first just about full load, I think we are going to have all of the grain we're going to need to be able to finish up everything that we want. So we're not going to need to plant corn in our, for our next harvest in the smaller field. We've got all the grain that we need already. But I go and have a look into here and we have a look at the pigs. We've got 171 pigs in there. And corn right there, I've got 112,000, 116,000. We're going to need to get another trailer load down here and put a bit more in besides this that we've just tipped in. But it won't take another full trailer load by the look of it. The 171 pigs, we do not have enough for another full trailer load. Now wheat and barley, we've got just about everything in here. All right, we're not we're not going to have anything else in here. I'm going to do that. I want to do that, and I want to do this. So with our hundred and eighty nine thousand dollars that we've got there, I'm actually very very tempted to go and just buy more pigs right now, and put more grain in for them. But downside of that is that if I go and do that, if I go and get the grain now, if I go and get the pigs now and put in. I still got to keep those extra animals fed until I can get another harvest of wheat done. And that last harvest of wheat is going to be the crucial one. And I think I'm going to need another harvest of uh, protein crop as well. So we will likely do canola in this field and we'll do wheat in that field. And that should be enough to do everything that we need to do. Again, we haven't emptied the combine out, but I think it'll be fine. I don't think it's going to cause us any major problems. Uh, if I can get you up here. Okay, it is going to cause us major problems. The combine is not able to pull that weight up. So we start unloading it as we go. There we go. That's actually really, really awesome. And realistic. Very realistic right there that he's not able to unload as he goes up the hill. And we had to take grain off in order for him to be able to pull up that hill there. That is absolutely, it was wheel spinning because he couldn't eat, like the load was too heavy. There was too much in the tank and he was wheel spinning as he was trying to get up that hill. That is realism for you right there. Right there, we got proper simulator realism, which is absolutely wickedly cool. I'm very pleased with that. I'm very pleased that it did actually do that. I'm going to leave the combine go for a minute. I'm going to drive the tractor right on up to the top. Actually, I think we're going to go right up over to the top corner. Because I'm also going to... I'd like to start sort of working my way... Uh, we're going to be doing the long runs next. But I'm going to start working from the top of the field up here, I think. But before I get too carried away with that, I am actually going to go in across there. And I'm going to do some passes around the big stone there. So I'm going to go back over to this one. And the reason that I want to do it from up this side is because I want to get the ploughing going. So we're not going to do three times around the field. We're just going to do twice around the field. Um, or, well, uh, sorry, we're not going to do four times. We can do three times. There's loads of space there with three times around the field. More than we need. I'm not going to bother doing three times for the bottom edge of the field. I'm just going to follow this bit along. And down the hill over the other side. Then I'm going to drive the combine back up. And we're going to start 
the hired help going backwards and forwards along this top edge up here rather than anywhere else. I'm not going to go and try and do it anywhere else from here. We're going to do it along the top edge or up here. I'm going to work our way down because then I can bring another tractor up with the plow and I can start working on the plowing up here as well. So we've gotten this far. I want to get over to there. It's about as close as we're going to get to that big stone. We can stop this one and put that spout out over there like that and a little bit more and then we're going to stop right there. We let that unload, and then as soon as it's done that, I'm going to go over to that big stone over there, and uh, I'm going to start driving around there. I'm interested to see if the hired help will drive round and round the big stone, or not. Like, what's it going to be like with the um, AI vehicle extension that we use? How is it going to cope with going around the big stone just on that little bit? Right, we'll put that spout back into there. And I will manually start this beastie up. And do a straight line in through here. Like this. Not entirely straight line, but that's enough. And I'm also hoping that the combine, the hired help, will be able to sort of see where that line is and then drive across it. Later on, when I'm doing some other things. So I'm going to bring you to that point right there. And then I'm going to press H. And what I'm hoping is it will be able to figure out going right the way around the stone and I'm thinking twice around the stone should be sufficient it's just coming in on the edge of it there so we, we have touched it just there and then I got a tree here that's kind of sticking out a bit how much is he going to try and come in on here though there he's coming in a long way see he's getting himself stuck on that which I don't want to do because it's, it's going to cause me problems so I'm going to manually go out round now I can see where it was trying to come in round like it's quite a sharp turn on this bit just here so I'll bring you in there like that and then I'm going to go out this way like this and then I'm going to press H again and it now seems to be able to sort of come out round this bit so twice on this, uh, we'll just do twice on here I won't do any more than that uh, that'll be more than enough then. We, we've got uh, enough room to be able to do all the turning around that we need to. So I'm kind of hoping that I don't need to do anything over on the other side either. Kind of hoping that that is going to be enough going down there. I'm not going to need to worry about that. We'll, we'll see. When we get over there, we, we will easily see whether or not we've got enough on that bit. Uh, just here though, what it's going to do, I suspect is he's not going to want to keep going around the outside of this. He's going to want to go and follow the edge of it up that way. No, he's not. He is going to keep coming back this way. Okay, that's quite fantastic, actually. Genuinely didn't expect it to want to do that. I thought for absolutely certain sure he was going to go the other way. Right. I will bring you around here. You have done a really wonderful job getting through there. We'll put the spout out again. We will unload the grain that we have got on us at the moment. I turned that the wrong way. To back round here. And back round again. Like that. I'm doing the thing where I'm looking at the back wheels. I'm looking at the direction of those wheels. And that's the direction I'm trying to turn rather than trying to turn the vehicle in the way that the vehicle itself is supposed to go. That's why I'm sort of struggling a little bit with the steering. I do that with rear wheel steer in this game. I don't know why though. Because I've used rear wheel steer loads. I've, sp I've spent countless hours driving combines forklifts, telehandlers, uh, all sorts of rear wheel drive machines. So it's, it's not like I'm doing something that's really unusual and strange that I've never done before. I, I'm, I'm used to handling these machines, so I don't really know why I sort of end up doing it like that. Now, I think the best bet on this bit here is not going to be for us to... Let me stop it there a minute. I don't want to use the AI vehicle extension for moving up and down the field on this. I think we'll use the standard hired help 
version of it. So if I go here and then I do that and that, so I go straight like a normal worker, and then I go from here. So it's still using the AI vehicle extension, which I think does help when it comes to like turning around on the ends of the rows. But I'm keeping the dead straight lines rather than uh, following the contours of the fields like the normal AI vehicle extension would do. And also like real life would do. If I was if if, if I was combining in real life, if anyone was combining in real life, well certainly in my part of the world, we have tram lines going everywhere. So we've we've got the tram lines where the uh, row crop tires you leave out uh, a double line of grain all the way down through uh, of crop. You leave you leave out a double line of crop all the way through your um, your fields every so often to allow for the wheels of the sprayer to be able to run up and down. So those are tram lines. Now you, uh, as far as I know, a lot of the US you don't have tram lines anywhere, like you, you because you, you don't spray later on or the, you, you do it differently. Um, but as far as I know, you don't uh, tram lines are not really a thing. So we we go in line with the tram lines because we do so much spraying through the winter. Those tram lines become really rough, and they can get quite deep. You can have tram lines six to twelve inches deep or more. Um, depending how wet the field was in the winter when you were busy doing your spraying. And it's not unusual for like the, those kinds of depths. So you don't want to be driving across the tram lines. And when you plant the field, you go round the outside a few times, round the outside, round the outside. And then once you've done that and you've got your bits round the outside, you then drive... What are you doing? You then everything goes up and down the field like everything is straight up and down the field it doesn't matter what sort of size so that the tram lines are all in dead straight lines right the way across the field and it's like that across the whole thing so when you've got your tram lines all in position and they're all laid out and they're all carefully plotted and everything you then you do a few times around the outside with the combine which is about three times you you go you thrice around the field sometimes four times to take out that outside round that's got the outside edge tram line so usually only one tram line and then you start working up and down so that you're in line with the rest of the fields right that's the way that the planting was done that's the way that if the cultivating was done before planting if you weren't direct drilling that's the way that you would have done it so that it's then smooth and your combine has a nice smooth ride going across tram lines is a disaster you don't want to do it if you can help i mean you might you might be all right you, you might have a field where it's relatively dry and you can get you can get away with going across tram lines without it being too much of a problem but nine times out of ten going across tram lines ends up making life difficult it ends up generally just giving you a really rough and bumpy ride and you don't really want that if you can help it you want to try to avoid the really rough and bumpy ride now what i'm going to do here i'm just going to move this one up out of the way like that and then that combine should go up through he should turn around he should keep it in the straight line we've said straight like the hired help worker so it's going to go up to there let me see what he's going to do. Is he going to back up far enough? Keep that all in a straight line up through there. Is he going to, like, leave a great big patch? I don't know what it's like on some of this. Oh, no, he's, he's backed up far enough. He's, he's gone all the way back. He's picked it up. That's good. I like that. That's, that's very good. So now we can run down here and we can go and offload some of this. He's got 70% on board now. So I want to run up alongside you like this and take our second load of the day. See, it's not gonna, we're, we're not going to get our second load just yet. So we were one and a half times around the outside of the field for a completely full, well, almost completely full load. It would have been a completely full load before we even got all the way along the bottom edge of the field on this one. And now we are over halfway full. We've got more than 4,000 litres left in that combine. I'm going to come out of there like that. And I'm going to drive back up to this end of the field. 
so that the combine doesn't stop. I, I want the combine to keep running. That's the important thing. So if I stay there with it at the end of the row, it will pause while it unloads. And we don't want it to do that. We want it to stay running. It's the important thing here. It must keep moving no matter what. We do not want this, uh, this machine, this beastie, this bad boy. We do not want it stopping. No matter what, it must keep going. It must keep plodding onwards. And that's sort of the key now with us unloading. Uh, if we just got to take off a half load in order for it to be able to then turn around and keep going again. Once he's gotten up here and he's turned around, we'll chase alongside him once more and we'll get another load of grain off of him. And it looks like also... I don't know how it's going to cope with doing these sort of odd bits on the end here. We got the little short runs there. I want to try and do the short runs first. It would make more sense to try and get those short runs done first. Now, he's going to go up here. Oh, I see. He is doing it pretty much how we would want it to happen. He's going to go up to that point right there, and then he's going to... Is he going to turn? Yes, he is. He is going to turn properly here, and then he should back up so that it goes fairly straight. There he gets to that point, and now he will back up this way. Back up a bit more. Oh, I see. He's sort of twisting out like that. That's, that's a slightly different approach than normal. And then he's going to here. Is he going to go right? He is going to go right the way across. That's good. So he's, he's able to read the field fairly well. I like that. I like that it can read the field. It's what's going to happen going back the other way but uh, let's let's not forget that we are supposed to be unloading this thing as he travels along because he's not going to be able to um fit another full run in there so i gotta take some of this off at least and then we can see him go back the other way for a little bit there we go start you running up along there excellent that's very good we're on 70 percent full at the moment i'm gonna need to take this down to at least 40 percent so we may have to park alongside the edge of the combine just a little bit down this other end we shouldn't need to yeah see look at that now he's gonna sit there and unload and i, I i've wasted valuable time I, I i made a mistake there that, I, I definitely made a mistake there. Let's let's get this trailer right back up to the other end so that we can properly unload everything off of that combine now. But it depends where he turns round. How far up this way is that combine going to go? I'll bring the trailer to here. And I'll try sort of that. And then we'll see. So now we can follow you. You should be alright. If you if you are going to go all the way up there, we should be able to catch that. And we should be able to unload the whole lot as he goes through. But it's whether or not he's going to stop at the stone here and do something weird to try and turn round. I suspect he's going to go right up to the other end. And then he's going to turn round. He's going to come back. But he's only going to come back part way. He's not going to go all the way back through. He's going to start working on those long runs, which I don't actually want it to do yet. I would like it to get those short runs done back over there and get that out of the way, cleaned and tidied up before we start doing too much work on the long runs up through here. And he's going to miss a little tiny bit on that long run up there. So he's going to come out here, he's going to pick up this a bit here that he left behind. And he's going to run all the way down the full length of the field here without any problem either. But what he's not going to do is quite catch everything down there but that's all right because we can let it just do this right here and i'll let it i'll let him drive all the way up through there and then we'll manually run it right back up through and we can just let it start working on those short bits over there and then we can race the tractor back over and take a bit from that at the same time so we want to let him get up to here he'll come straight out through We've got a nearly full grain tank, so we will have to unload a little bit. Have to sort of play it carefully now. Let me do this. Right. You're finished there. So then I can swing you around like this and manually myself just quickly take out this little tiny kink in the field. Get that bit. And then 
you've done, oops, no, I didn't want to press H there at all, I wanted to just bring it up through, so we'll run you down over here, as fast as I can, I need to get, I, I drove the tractor up too far, it's going to be our problem now, is that tractor is up too far, it's going to cause problems for us, then I want to bring this one in over this side like this, and I want to meet up with that bit right there, and do that. And then I want to very quickly go like this, and I want to get over to you as quickly as I can, so that I can get some of that grain unloaded before you reach the end of the field. We are 30... 38... 40k... What are you... Why are you doing that? Why are you doing a run along there. That's not what I said to do at all. Right. Wait a minute. That is not what I said to do at all. So now I'm going to have to bring it back and I'm going to have to start it doing that again. Oh, I know why. Because I did tell it to do that. I wasn't lined up straight. That was entirely my fault. It didn't... I thought that maybe it corrected itself. Ooh, maybe it did. I was thinking it had corrected itself and it pushed itself over to the wrong point. But no, it didn't. It just went through there because that's what I just told it to go and do. So it's going to have to run back through there now. But he's going quite slow. So I'm hoping I can get there before he gets another 100 litres of grain into him. And then we can un we're going to have to take off a couple thousand litres here. If I don't take off a couple thousand litres, he's not going to be able to run back up the length of the field again. So I'm just going to have to sit here for a second and let him unload a little bit into me. Uh, 70, we'll run it down to 60%. This is bad, the combine is parked up, I'm not doing anything right now. The combine has... You haven't completed anything at all, you liar. How can you honestly say you've completed anything at all? Seriously, what is wrong with you? I've not had any issues with the hired... Well, I have had issues with the hired help, but a sort of, you know... I've grown accustomed to the hired help and their idiocies and just how moronic they are. But that, honestly, that was, that was just taking the biscuit, that was. That was absolutely taking the biscuit, that was. Uh, I will go to right there and let that one start working there. And then this tractor we're going to run up through this way. So we've got 25,000 litres of grain on board. We've got 5,000, 6,000 litres of grain on board that combine. I'm really hoping that I can swing this one round up here. That combine will turn round there beside the stone and I will get most of the rest of the stuff unloaded from there and on board. The price of wool at the moment has now leveled out at 1,102, but I have run out of time to go and do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slow time down to one time speed because the price of wool has maxed out, and we are going to, at the very beginning of next week, the first thing we're going to do next week is we're going to sell the wool down the bottom. So that I don't forget, because the whole week is going to pass between now and then, uh, I will make sure that I leave a tractor and trailer hooked together down there so that it reminds me that that is actually what I need to do. Now, I've got this one right here. I am going to let the combine just sit here and unload the last little bit of grain that I need. Uh, it's going to take all of the grain that is in that combine. And then it's going to do another pass on here. A uh, thousand liters left. Is it? Are, are we? Who's going to be first? Are we going to fill up? Or is the combine going to run? We're going to fill up. Combine's got a hundred liters of grain left on board. Right, so we want to take this over to the farm and we're going to tip this into the pigs. We need to keep an eye on that combine as we're going. And then we're also going to need to make sure that we've got that other tractor and trailer ready. I'm slowing down as much as I can. And that is not the way to take that kind of corner with that kind of trailer. Um, I should have gone a lot more slowly than that. That was a uh, disaster narrowly avoided and not through any skill, I might add. It was pure dumb luck that stopped 
an absolute disaster from happening there. That was 100% pure dumb luck. And I've often felt like you, you will get people who will say, oh, no, that was just because of my skill. And, um, and they won't even admit to themselves that they made a mistake and it was dumb luck. And I do think, I honestly believe, you can be a good driver and you can make really stupid mistakes sometimes. You need to learn from those mistakes, obviously. That is a good thing. But knowing when it was skill and being able to admit to yourself when something wasn't skill and the only reason you avoided a pileup was because of 100% pure dumb luck. If you can admit that to yourself, you're well on your way to becoming a better driver. You're well on your way to becoming a better machinery operator. If you can admit to yourself when it was dumb luck, and despite your absolute stupidity, you didn't have an accident just because you got lucky that day, that's really a, a benefit that is that's a good thing it's a good thing when that can happen right what we're going to do is i'm going to leave this one here as well like that so that i don't forget at the beginning of next week that we need to load up those wool pallets and we need to sell them for another big injection of cash and while we're saying goodbye we'll run back up here and just take a look at the combine here's run to the end of here so we can now start on the long runs in a minute as well so if you've enjoyed this episode, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.